the definition of the word Sphinx in the Britannica Encyclopedia. Sphinx, a mythological creature with a lion's body and a human head. An important image in Egyptian and Greek art and legend. The word Sphinx is derived from the Greek language, from the verb spingine, meaning to bind or to squeeze. The Sphinx represents a crouching beast with a lion's body and a human head, which is a symbol of kingship. The monument is meant to be seen as a guardian of the Giza Symmetry when Tutmos of the 4th Dynasty created the Dream Steel, which is a granite slab with an inscription of the dream that Tutmosis had about the Sphinx. The Egyptians associated the Sphinx with the Sun God and therefore bore the divine name Hora Mahat, which means Horus on the horizon, and Kepri Rayatum, which refers to the morning, daytime, and evening forms of the sun. For over 4,000 years, the Sphinx has sat at its regal post, like an eternal guardian over the Egyptian desert. Majestic and imposing, who built this mysterious sculpture? And what does it mean? Could it hold missing links to information about our past? Information about a long forgotten civilization of mankind? Or important ancient knowledge that can possibly improve our lives of today? Modern technology has come a long way in helping us search for answers to these ancient questions hidden in this remarkable monument. But the greatest secrets of the Sphinx still remain silent and mysterious. The keeper of wisdom, the guardian of unexplored secrets. In this documentary, we will seek to explore the great mysteries of the Sphinx. What is the riddle of the Sphinx? One of the oldest of the great wonders of the ancient world. No other man-made object has captured our spirit like the great Sphinx. The Giza Plateau is a plateau in Giza, on the outskirts of Cairo, Egypt. The plateau is elevated approximately 60 meters above sea level, and the entire plateau contains hundreds of large and smaller pyramids and spans a length of over 80 kilometers. It's the site of the 4th Dynasty Giza Necropolis, which includes the Great Pyramid of Khufu, the Great Pyramid of Khafre, and the Great Pyramid of Menkara. It also includes a sphinx several cemeteries, a workers' village, and an industrial complex. Modern Giza is assessed by two main roads. The road from the north leads to Khufu's Pyramid, and the other road leads to near the Sphinx's front court from the east. They cross the Nile River from the east bank and follow the causeway westward. Dominating the plateau and running in a southwest diagonal through the site are three great pyramids of the pharaohs Khufu, Khafre, and Mankara. A 
Attempts to find out the meaning of the Great Sphinx have gone on for centuries and even millennia. Many researchers and explorers of all types have tried to find the mysterious meaning behind the Sphinx's age and who built the ancient statue and whose face it is that is carved into the mysterious stone. Many archaeologists and scientists around the world have all searched for the answers but no one has yet to factually prove as to who the Sphinx is and how old the structure actually is. Still, after all the research is gathered, there are a few facts that are commonly agreed upon. The Sphinx's head was carved from a limestone hill. It depicts a half lion and half human. It faces east on the Giza Plateau, almost 400 meters from the Great Pyramids. It stands 20 meters tall and has a total length of 74 meters. This is as much as we know for sure about the Great Statue. And like the figure itself, everything else is shrouded in mystery. There is not one hieroglyphic, nor one scroll, nor one ancient text that speaks about the exact date and age, or even of the time when the Sphinx was carved. There is no written record about the exact purpose of the Sphinx, to who it was, or to what it was for. There are no details about what the Sphinx really is. Half man, Half lion, half woman, half beast. Some say it was originally something else. A falcon maybe, or an abyss. Then after thousands of years, it was recarved into something else. It is also impossible to know the original name or entity of the Sphinx, or when it was completed. The closest to its original name is what the ancient Egyptians called the statue during the New Kingdom, when the Sphinx was worshipped as a deity, Horam Akhet, or Horus of the Horizon. Facing directly west to east, it stands on the Giza Plateau on the west bank of the Nile in Giza, Egypt. According to Egyptologists, the face of the Sphinx is most commonly believed to represent the Pharaoh Khafre, who ruled Egypt from 2558 to 2532 BC. There are many explanations as to why many Egyptologists have come to this conclusion. Cut directly from the bedrock, the original shape of the Sphinx has been rebuilt with layers of new blocks. It measures 74 meters or 240 feet long from paw to tail, 20 meters or 66 feet high from the base to the top of its head, and 19 meters or 62 feet wide at its rear section. It is the oldest known sculpture in Egypt and is commonly believed to have been built by ancient Egyptians of the Old Kingdom during the reign of Pharaoh Khafre, circa 2558 to 2532 BC. But there are some scholars and archaeologists that debate this assumption and believe the Sphinx is much older. Some scholars have put the age at much later in the past, dating even before the reign of King Sneferu, Khafre's father which will push back the date of the Sphinx to roughly about 4,700 years old, versus the most common theory being asserted that it is approximately 4,500 years old, pushing the date back another 200 years, further than even the most critical of estimates. That 200-year difference is a major conclusion since going back 200 years at that period, 
will have gone into Egypt's early dynastic period, which would have been even before the most ancient of any Egyptian pyramid building on record. In fact, about the time of the earliest dynasties in Egypt. Today, many new hobbyists and professionals have drawn interest in dating the age of the Sphinx. There are now some far-reaching estimates that are challenging these theories and data and putting the time of the Sphinx building to even further back than that. Some new theories draw into speculation a construction age going back to over 20,000 years to a time before any Egyptian civilization on record and even before the last ice age. The Great Sphinx was not a monument that was built but rather carved out of a single block of stone. There are many people who believe that the Sphinx was constructed block by block just like the pyramids using blocks of stone. But the fact is the Great Sphinx was carved directly out of the bedrock of the Giza Plateau. In recent times the Sphinx has been restored with layers of new construction to help preserve the masterpiece. New blocks were added to help create a smoother image we have today. The Sphinx is made of different layers of limestone. The body of the statue is carved from soft layers of natural limestone which have also degraded throughout the years and the layer out of which the head was sculpted from is of a much harder layer. Early Egyptologists were known to admit that the Sphinx could predate even the fourth dynasty of ancient Egypt. One such Egyptologist was Flanders Petri who wrote in 1833 that the date of the granite temple has been so positively asserted to be earlier than the fourth dynasty that it may seem rash to dispute the point. Another Egyptologist who had no issue agreeing that the Sphinx may predate the fourth dynasty reign of Khafre was E.A. Wallace Budge. In his 1914 book, The Gods of the Egyptians, he wrote, this marvelous object was in existence in the days of Khafre or Khephren, and it is probable that it is a very great deal older than his reign, that it dates from the end of the Archaic period, around 2686 BC. It is possible the greatest carving on earth, and also the oldest, can also be older than all of our wildest expectations. To think that a human monument can surpass the time going back into history 5,000 or perhaps 10,000 or perhaps 20,000 years is a real achievement. Surpassing the date of the last ice age and still be with us as proof of a glorious civilization of our past. A past that can only be a glorious one with advanced technology and can possibly hold many clues to a long lost civilization. Somewhere, a culture long ago was advanced enough to construct a solid work of architectural achievement, so great it could last seemingly forever. This discovery would change our understanding of the human achievement and reshape our notion of our ancestors and human evolution. Close by crouches the Sphinx, the gigantic figure of a lion with a human head, typifying the union of intelligence and strength. Built over 6,000 years ago, it is probably the oldest relic of human workmanship the world knows. Time and Muslim fanaticism have destroyed the features of its face, but this relic of Egyptian antiquity still stands. Solomon Silent, a symbol of eternity. The Sphinx is so African, you can feel it. You can feel the energy of the African features going through your body. 
to say that Sphinx was anything other than an African person may be doing it an injustice. If advanced technological capabilities were needed in order to carve the Sphinx, and with the statue depicting a person with such Africanized features, dating back to a time over 20,000 years ago, then this finding would indeed reshape history. The most common scientific theory is that the Sphinx was carved from a natural limestone outcrop during the reign of King Khafre, the third pharaoh of the fourth dynasty. Khafre was the son of King Khufu, who's best known for building the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid of Giza, also known as the Pyramid of Khufu, or the Pyramid of Cheops, is the oldest and largest of the three pyramids in Giza. It was built during the fourth dynasty of ancient Egypt, which was known as the Golden Age of the Old Kingdom of Egypt. Dynasty IV lasted from 2613 to 2494 BC. It was a time of peace and prosperity, as well as one during which trade with other countries is well documented. The Fourth Dynasty heralded the height of the pyramid building age. Although there were other pyramids before the Great Pyramid, notably built by Khufu's father, King Sneferu, such as the Medium Pyramid, the Bent Pyramid, and the Red Pyramid. The Red Pyramid is widely considered the first true pyramid and earned its name from the reddish tint in the limestone it used. The Red Pyramid was considered the first real pyramid. The Red Pyramid was the first to be given a solid foundation so that it was stable enough to hold the weight needed to build a taller structure. And although not the most elaborate builder of pyramids, King Sneferu was known as the pharaoh who built the most pyramids and also the pharaoh who moved the most amount of stone to build pyramids in his lifetime, making King Sneferu, a real pyramid building innovator, and who was also the first pharaoh of Egypt. Khufu, Sneferu's successor and son, was a widely regarded pharaoh. He is credited with building the Great Pyramid on the northeastern plateau of Giza. Also known as the Great Pyramid of Giza, which is the largest and most complex of the pyramids of Giza, where he was also buried. The second tallest pyramid at Giza, the Pyramid of Khafre, was built by Khufu's son, Khafre. The Pyramid of Khafre, or Shepran, is the second tallest and second largest of the ancient Egyptian pyramids of Giza. And the tomb of the fourth dynasty, Pharaoh Khafre, or Shepran, who ruled from 2558 to 25. 32 BC. It is said that the Sphinx is part of this complex. The Sphinx may have been part of the original plans for a complex that included the building of the Great Pyramid. The view held by modern Egyptology is that the Great Sphinx was built in approximately 2500 BC for King Khafre. This is supported by the proximity of the Sphinx to Khafre's pyramid temple complex. 
and a certain resemblance to the facial structure seen in his statue. The Great Sphinx of Giza may have been carved out as a guardian of Khafre's pyramid and as a symbol of royal power. It became deified during the time of the New Kingdom, thus producing an age of roughly 4,500 years ago as a time that the Sphinx was carved. Throughout its history, the Great Sphinx was feared and admired, believed to have been colorfully painted in the distant past. There is only so much we know about the Great Sphinx, and most of what we do know comes from a time when the Sphinx was already ancient. The Great Sphinx was many times covered up to its neck in Egypt's illustrious golden sands. But just as the sands of Egypt engulfed the massive statue, so did the mystery of the Sphinx's age and construction. Although the many times the sands were cleared with the location of the vast desert surrounding the great complex, the sands only returned, only to be cleared once again and again, and again. The mystery surrounding the Great Sphinx has endured since time was recorded. But just how long has the Sphinx stood at its prominent post, guarding the horizon, faithfully guarding the massive pyramid metropolises? Who constructed this massive display? Who was the massive statue card for? And what was its purpose? Was it a glorified statue? Or is it something else? Or is there something more to the massive spectacle of human engineering that is the Sphinx? The Sphinx is not only the oldest, but it is also regarded as the world's largest statue. However, the exact age of the Sphinx may be a mystery that we will perhaps never solve. That's because it is impossible to identify the original age and builder of the Sphinx, because simply there are no records. We don't know when it was originally carved. Although Egyptologists like to believe that the Sphinx came into existence during ancient Egypt's fourth dynasty, under the reign of Pharaoh Khafre, this is of course a mere guess, as there have never been any kind of text, carving, or hieroglyph that mentions the Sphinx in any context. At times during high floods, the Sphinx would actually have been a small island in the Nile. Many times the Sphinx had been filled in with wind-blown sand because of its location at the edge of the desert. And so the entire site would be filled up to its neck with sand. So the site had to be excavated many times over the millennia. It's a solid rock sculpture. There's no interior. No temple on the inside, no hidden chambers, and no burial chamber. There's nothing inside except for a couple of borings or small holes. And the side sits exactly above sea level, as it is 66 feet tall. The body of the Sphinx, or assumed to be, is severely weathered down. Some places, the weathering is worse off than other places. Some places, the weathering is as deep as 0 0.72 meters. Some places, about 2 to 3 feet. And various modes of weathering have been suggested. 
water damage, damage through sand and wind. All of this accumulated over the years to leave many parts of the sculpture brittle enough that it can be flaked off easily with the bare hand. That's one of the reasons the Sphinx is constantly being worked on and improved to preserve its beauty and history. There are a lot of geologists who are saying that the Sphinx is far older than any of the Egyptologists were willing to accept. They were all using the weathered surface of the Sphinx as the evidence that the Sphinx must be extremely older than the current estimate of 4,500 years. And since human civilization on record only dates back to 6,000 years, New Age theories that refugees from Atlantis who had originally immigrated from Mars were the ones that actually built the Sphinx. A real far out theory, but this is pretty much what these theories are alluding to. Robert Scott, a PhD geologist and geophysicist from Yale, who teaches at Boston University, has teamed up with John Anthony West, an author and lecturer. John West contends that the main type of weathering evident in the Great Sphinx and surrounding enclosure walls could only have been caused by prolonged and extensive rainfall during the time period from 10,000 to 5000 BCE and was carved out of the limestone bedrock by an ancient advanced culture. This challenged the conventional dating of the carving of the statue circa 2500 BCE. West suggested that the Sphinx may be more than twice as old as originally determined, whereas Scott made a more conservative estimate of around 5000 BCE. Famous psychic Edward Casey is also noted as claiming that the Sphinx is also much older than the given estimate of 4,500 years. Casey had even made an astounding claim that there is a hall of records, so that the people who left Atlantis took all of their knowledge and put it into their repertories and left them in different places. One was in Atlantis, one was in the Yucatan Peninsula, and the third one was beneath the right paw of the Sphinx of Egypt, and it contains the knowledge of Atlantis and our ancient alien ancestors. How did Edgar Cayce know this? How did he know that there are ancient records buried under the Sphinx's right paw? The answer is simple. According to Cayce, he actually lived himself in ancient Egypt around the time of the Sphinx's construction. According to him, he lived in a previous life, and in Egypt, he was one of the high priests that helped oversee the construction and design of the ancient monument. In his statements, he claimed that he was a high priest who helped design the pyramids and the Sphinx, and his name at the time was known as Rata, R-A-T-A, -A. and the year was roughly 10,000 500 BC, way before any known Egyptian civilization on record, and in the early 70s, followers of Casey went on an exhibition to Egypt to try to find and excavate this mysterious hall of records beneath the paws of the Sphinx. They digged and they digged and kept digging and even dig some more, but they never could find anything no hall of records, no ancient secrets or knowledge, nothing. So eventually the expedition came to a halt and the theories of Edgar Casey eventually went out the window, along with a host of other Casey theories. Another theory is that it's not a theory, but actually based on factual geological evidence. Based on the actual aging of the rocks that are deposited at the site. It is that the limestone rock formation that makes up the Giza Plateau and the Sphinx itself 
is carved directly out of the limestone rock that were deposited there 40 million years ago, which will actually date back the actual rock from the Sphinx back as early as the Eocene period, or the PETM. The Paleocene, Eocene, Thermal, Maximum. But even though the limestone rock formation of the Giza Plateau and the Sphinx is over 40 million years old, that doesn't mean the Sphinx itself is actually 40 million years old. That number is just the age of the actual rock. The statue was carved out of. The Sphinx itself is not a monument, but actually a carving that was actually carved directly out of the raw stone outcrop that laid in the desert for 40 million years. So, it is estimated by scientific fact that the actual limestone rock the Sphinx was carved out of is essentially 40 million years old. The Sphinx's carving itself is being debated as being at least 4,500 years old, and some are going as far back as 10,000 years old. But what is known is that it was carved out of a limestone formation that has been sitting in the desert for 40 million years. Who built the Sphinx? Robert Bouval is a Belgian author and lecturer, perhaps best known for his Orion correlation theory regarding the Giza pyramids. Robert Bouval has came up with the theory that a forgotten ancient civilization designed the Sphinx and the pyramids to line up with the stars. Dating back even before the 10,500 year prediction of Edgar Cayce. Bouval has professed that the complex goes back 12,500 years, further back into ancient history than was ever predicted. Bouval's theory suggests that these ancient civilizations passed on this information from one generation to the next until 8,000 years later into the Old Kingdom, the golden age of monument building in ancient Egypt. The pharaohs finally possessed the technology and the skills needed to carry out such grandiose building efforts. A principal belief behind the people who built these ancient monuments was the belief that the king would live forever in the sky after death. So according to Baval's theory, these monuments would have something to do with the sky. And if we have the ability to see the sky as these ancient civilizations did, maybe we can have a better understanding to what was the driving force behind these ancient monuments. Today we can reconstruct the sky of ancient Egypt with computer simulation. By using computers, we can go back into time to see exactly how the stars lined up with the ancient sky. Earth revolves around the sun once each year and passes through all the signs of the zodiac. But year to year, there's a gradual shift in the time of year when each constellation rises in the night sky. This change is called the precession of the equinox. Gravity from the sun, moon, and other planets causes the earth to wobble on its axis. As it rotates, it takes 26 thousand years for the earth to revolve once around its axis in the years between the position of the constellation shift. This phenomenon was first explained by Sir Isaac Newton in 1687, but it was long understood in many ancient civilizations like the Inca and the Maya and the Dogon. But it is with computer simulation of the ancient skies that we can see how the night skies over Giza looked like at the spring equinox. 
Bouval has made an unfounded discovery above Giza. 12,000 years ago, the pyramids were numbered in the sky by a constellation. The three stars of Orion's belt lined up perfectly with the Pharaoh's tomb. This alignment might seem like a coincidence, except that these stars held powerful significance to ancient Egyptians and played a major role in their mythology about life after death. The constellation known as Orion was called Sahu by the Egyptians, a symbol of Osiris, the god of death and rebirth. According to the Egyptian mythology, Osiris was murdered by his brother, Isis, his sister and wife brought him back to life. Their son, Horus, ruled in the land of the living, while Osiris ruled in the kingdom of the dead. Pharaohs were referred to as Horus when alive and referred to Osiris after they died. The belief was that the Pharaoh would become a star after death. So these rituals were to be formed on him after death. As it was believed that he could resurrect from the dead like Osiris. They mummified the Pharaoh's body in such a way that the Pharaoh would become himself and Osiris after death. And from there on become a star and would go on to rule his special place in the night sky. If the pyramids were laid out to secure the Pharaoh's place in heaven, where did the Sphinx fit in this design? The Sphinx is one of the great man-made mysteries of all time. Trying to work out why it was built is why Robert Bouval developed this theory that the Egyptians were inspired by the stars. The Sphinx faces east away from the west, the realm of the dead, and gazes east toward the land of the living. Bouval believes that whatever constellation the Sphinx was under at the spring equinox signaled the ruling astrological sign of the time. Today, the constellation Pisces rises at the spring equinox. Bouval believes, if his theory is correct, that the man-made monuments were created to reflect the night sky, then he'd find the Sphinx mirrored in the heavens at the same time the constellation of Orion was aligned with the pyramids. Using modern computer astrological simulations, Bouval discovered that the constellation Leo rose in the east in ancient times. The Sphinx appears to have been gazing towards its own image in the stars. But this theory about what inspired the ancient Egyptians remains controversial and is debunked by many specialists in the field. Other researchers and astronomers independently investigated the angle between the alignment of Orion's belt to the north during the era specified by Bouval and found that the angle was somewhat different from the perfect match claimed by Bouval, 47 to 50 degrees, as compared to the 38 degree angle formed by the pyramids. Archaeologists have dismissed Bouval's claims and insist there wasn't even the most basic civilization in Egypt 12,500 years ago to conceive these monuments. Also, it seems impossible that detailed plans for these monuments could have survived 8,000 years until the time of the pharaohs to build these advanced complexes. Yet somehow Bouval believed the concepts survived and the people who created them mysteriously vanished. Most Egyptologists have long assumed that the Sphinx was built at the same time as its neighbors, the Great Pyramids of Giza, and many archeologists spanning many years, have searched for answers to confirm Bouval's theory. 
One of the most interesting sites at Giza is the burial site. It was the final resting ground for many of the workers who worked at the Great Pyramids. These were the pharaoh's master craftsmen, stonemasons, and foremen. Detailed inscriptions on the grave sites are detailed, revealing what the men loved and enjoyed to do. One man boasted of overseeing the construction of one side of the pyramid, but among all these writings there were not one mention, or not one inscription or depiction of the amazing Sphinx. Scientists and archaeologists have looked for clues that could contain information about the man or creature that is the Sphinx. But despite years of research, the age-old question goes still unanswered. Who built this ancient monument? And for what purpose? But there is at least one ancient story that links the Sphinx to other great wonders at Giza. One thousand years after the pyramid's construction, an Egyptian prince hunted in the valley of the gazelles near the famous tombs. He was a royal prince, but not the heir to the pharaoh's crown. Desert sand had settled around the Sphinx, burying the statue up to its neck in sand. Seeking shelter from the hot sun and wind, the prince lay down for a rest right below the Sphinx's head. And as he fell asleep, according to the pharaoh, he had a great dream. He had a dream that the Sphinx spoke to him and promised him the throne of the pharaoh. In exchange, the prince was to free the Sphinx from its layers of buried sand. When the prince awoke, he carried out the Sphinx's request, and him and his men dig the Sphinx out of its sandy burial. And true to his dream, he later became Pharaoh. He ruled as Tutmosis IV, the supreme monarch of ancient Egypt. And as a special thanks to the Sphinx, Tutmosis placed a massive granite plaque known as the Dream Stele between the Sphinx's paws. On the Dream Stele, on line 13, a fragment of a word seemed to reach down toward the Sphinx's calf. Many Egyptologists read this as a confirmation by Tutmosis that Khafre, or Shepherd, the pharaoh who had built the second tallest pyramid, had also created the Sphinx. But was one incomplete word enough to prove as to who actually built the great Sphinx? Shepherd certainly had the power and ability to create the Sphinx. He ruled at the height of the Old Kingdom almost 4,500 years ago, when Egyptian culture, economy, and military might flourished. Sculptures immortalized Shepherd with numerous statues, and one Shepherd sits on a throne adorned with lions, a symbol of his godlike stature. His formal title was the son of Ra, the sun god, Horus and sometimes depicted in the form of a falcon. Shepherd was considered the earthly form of God and was also known as the living God. Despite his achievements, much about Shepherd, also known as Khafre or Khafre, remains shrouded in mystery. While little is known about his life, he left a detailed record of his death. Master builders constructed one of the greatest wonders of the world to serve as his gigantic tomb. It may have been topped off by a massive gold capstone to dazzle all who dared to look upon it. Shepherd's Pyramid towers almost 140 meters above the desert, second only to that of his father Cheops, also known as Khufu. The pyramid may have been the final resting place for his body, 
but he erected other buildings to help his soul reach the afterlife. The Valley Temple stood 494 meters from Shefren's Pyramid. When the Pharaoh died, his body was brought there. Priests took charge of his remains and mummified it using long forgotten techniques. The body and all of its organs were preserved for life in the afterlife. And massive granite blocks were transported from quarries more than 800 kilometers away. Narrow openings allowed streaks of light to illuminate the 24 statues of Chepherd that lined the walls of the Valley Temple. If Shepard created the Sphinx as part of an elaborate effort to ensure immortality in the afterlife 4,500 years ago, was the Sphinx built to guard the Pharaoh's ancient resting place? Many Egyptologists believe that the Sphinx represented Horus, just as the Pharaoh did. It faced east and bowed in the direction of the rising sun. In modern times, computer models of Chefren's face were placed against the images of the Sphinx to determine if the statue is truly him. The computer simulations are in. The evidence seems strong that Chefren is indeed the face depicted on the Sphinx. Many Egyptologists consider Chefren the Sphinx's most likely builder, but some experts are not convinced. One major factor, it seems, is that Shefrin was always depicted with a beard. The Sphinx did not have a beard originally. Because of the Sphinx's headdress, which was similarly worn by Shefrin, and many facial features that are consistent with Shefrin's facial features, it is widely held that the depiction of the Sphinx is indeed Shefrin. But many Egyptologists and even modern anatomists Experts in putting together facial compositions have also debated that the Sphinx resembles Shefren, but also resembles Sheops, Shefren's father. But putting a graphical version of Sheops' face together poses more challenges, since all available statuettes and depictions of Sheops are damaged, and major facial proponents to determine if he is indeed the face of the Sphinx, have been long chipped away. The Sphinx's face has been changed several times. The first hints of this surface 200 years ago. Throughout history, the desert has almost completely swallowed the Sphinx in the sand several times. The first person to clear away the sand in recent times was an Italian sea captain and explorer named Giovanni Battista Caviglian. And in 1816, he uncovered a major find that laid buried between the giant paws of the Sphinx for thousands of years. The discovery of the Dream Steely, a giant stone slab depicting the great dream of Tutmosis of the fourth dynasty. Captivated by this discovery, Giovanni thirsted for more findings and he devoted himself to finding even more ancient Egyptian artifacts. He sold much of what he found to the highest bidder. One of the artifacts he found was a few pieces of what appears to be ornately carved large stone fragments, totaling about a meter in length. This finding was found to be a beard once worn by the Sphinx. Could this beard undermine the theory that the Sphinx was Pharaoh Cheops? A further investigation into this new addition to the riddle of the Sphinx deepens this mystery Currently, 
the British Museum in London holds the rest of the beard fragments found by Giovanni Battista. All of the pieces share a crisscross pattern used to depict a braided beard, and braided beards were not in fashion until almost 1,000 years after the time of both Chevron and Cheops. It was not until the New Kingdom of Tutankhamun that braided beards came into fashion. And in Chepron's time, wedge-shaped beards were only worn by pharaohs. The braided beard, once adorned by the Sphinx, was not originally part of the monument. It was added much later to match the style and fashion of the time. Other more recent additions to the Sphinx has made it harder to unravel the great mysteries of this monument. The Egyptian Sphinx has intrigued and baffled people for centuries. Who built this magical monument? What does it depict? Tracing the history of the Sphinx is more difficult today because it has been altered so many times throughout history. The Sphinx's missing nose did not erode by itself or fall off through natural occurrences, but by human acts. Throughout its history, the Sphinx has came under scrutiny from numerous rulers, conquerors, and leaders. A recurring story of how the Sphinx's nose fell off blames Napoleon Bonaparte for the incident. In the year 1798, when Napoleon seized Egypt, he supposedly ordered his men to shoot off the Sphinx's nose. A bold act of degradation, an act of psychological warfare, or simply blatant vandalism. It has long been thought it was Napoleon who shot off the nose of the Sphinx, but it wasn't Napoleon who defaced the sacred monument. Napoleon had already made his mark on history and was inspired by Egypt's past accomplishments. Napoleon toured the Great Pyramid of Cheops on August 12, 1798. And when he went into the king's chamber, he asked all of his soldiers and staff to leave the chamber as he wanted to be left alone. Moments later, when he emerged from the room, he was visibly shaken for the rest of his life. He refused to talk about what he saw or felt in the chamber. Napoleon did not come to conquer Egypt. He wanted to study it. He bought a large council of artists and scientists who carried out the first extensive study of Egyptian antiquity in Europe, and their discoveries paved the way for history's romance with Egyptian history and culture. Modern Egyptologists agree that the defacing of the Sphinx took place before Napoleon's arrival. There are artistic drawings before Napoleon's time that show the monument without a nose. The French expedition produced a famous description daily sheet of which scores of painters and engraving artists produced 21 volumes of images. Through these images, people viewed the wonders of ancient Egypt. And for the first time, Europeans and Americans could safely travel to Egypt in search of enlightenment and culture, as well as adventure and treasure. The modern fascination with Egyptian culture was ignited by Napoleon, according to Dr. Zahi Hawass, Egypt's main Egyptologist and Minister of Antiquities. Dr. Hawass states that Napoleon Bonaparte has nothing to do with the destruction of the Sphinx's nose. His account is that there was a Sufi named Mohammed Salim in the 9th century AD who came to the site and found the people still worshipping the Sphinx as a god there. He did not like that idea, so he came up with a plan to damage the nose of the Sphinx. To show the people that this is a stone and not a god, according to Dr. Hawass. It was Muhammad Salim who knocked off the Sphinx's nose, as he believed worshipping the idol was sinful, and so he hired men to deface it. The Arabs still call the Sphinx Abu Hall, or Father of Terror. Dr. Hawass also states that after the Sphinx was damaged, Salim was executed 
and desert sands rose up and claimed the fertile land around Giza. Even in ancient times, the Sphinx embodied mystery. Many believe the Egyptian term was different for the monument. It became the word Sphinx in Greek culture. Greeks looked to Egypt as a source of much of what is magical and unexplained. The word Sphinx is derived from a Greek word, meaning a mythological creature with a lion's body and a human head. An important figure in ancient Greek mythology. The word Sphinx is derived from the Greek verb spinghein, meaning to bind or to squeeze. Hesiod, the earliest Greek author to mention the creature, called it Sphix, or P-H-I-X. The Sphinx represents a crouching beast with a lion's body and a human head, which is a symbol of kingship. The monument is meant to be seen as a guardian of the Giza symmetry when Tutmosis of the fourth dynasty created a dream stele, which is a granite slab with an inscription of the dream that Tutmosis had about the Sphinx, which enabled him to free it from his sandy grave. The Egyptians associated the Sphinx with the sun god, and it therefore bore the divine names Hora Mahat, which means Horus in the horizon, and Kepri Rayatum, which refers to the morning, daytime, and evening forms of the sun. <laughs>